And there's the sun again. Ah, this lovely spring weather. Welcome back to my channel. Yes, my channel is about cigars, growing cigar tobacco, smoking the cigars, just smoking and enjoying cigars in general. But, um, this video is going to be a little bit different. So let's put the cigar down. This video is going to be about something else, something else that is very close to my heart and something that is of national importance to most South Africans. Something that is part of our heritage. Yes, Biltong. So, without any further ado, let's make some Biltong. So what exactly is Biltong? Well, the word Biltong comes from Dutch. Bil meaning buttock and tong meaning a strip or tongue. So basically translated means a strip of meat. And hundreds of years ago, when the European settlers first came to the Cape, they noticed the native inhabitants would preserve their meat by salting and hanging them up to dry. As there were no ice boxes or refrigeration technology back then, preserving meat was very important and game was plentiful. And the Europeans brought with them recipes, including their knowledge of herbs and spices, and of course vinegar, which was very handy for helping to cure the meat. So the core recipe for biltong consisted of meat, salt, coriander seed, black pepper, cloves, and vinegar, with some saltpeter added, which was useful to kill the bacteria responsible for botulism, and the acidity of vinegar would inhibit its growth, and coriander oil has very good antimicrobial properties. In January 2017, a research group at the University of Beira Interior in Portugal published a study on the antimicrobial properties of coriander oil against 12 strains of bacteria and found that 10 of the 12 strains were killed with a relatively mild concentration of coriander oil. In the two strains that were not killed outright, the coriander oil reduced their growth significantly. And in those days, the best biltong was traditionally made during the winter months when the colder temperatures further inhibited bacterial and fungal growth. So traditionally, the best cuts of meat for making the best biltong would be silver side, top side, and rump with the strips of meat cut along the grain. So let's begin there with the very first ingredient for biltong. There we go. Meat. Let's see. Uh. A little bit lean there, buddy. What a nice fat one. No, not you. Uh, that one's a bit small. Come out the way, buddy. Smell you later. Ooh, there's a juicy one. Let's see. He's not moving too quickly. All right. Yes. So here we have a lovely juicy piece of rump. So uh, let's go ahead and slice it up. The chunk of rump has been sliced up into generous steaks. They are between two and three centimeters thick. And we will now move on to the spice mix. And once the spices have been mixed up, I will sprinkle them upon each piece of meat and rub it in thoroughly 
and then we'll layer the meat in some containers and sprinkle a bit of vinegar on each layer and then these containers will go in the fridge overnight. been in the fridge for about 12 hours. Uh, earlier this morning I took them out and I just uh, turned the pile of meat upside down basically because the vinegar tends to lie on the bottom so the bottom pieces get nicely pickled and the top pieces don't so I just flipped everything over to allow the top pieces to rest in the vinegar solution for a while. So I reckon it's ready to be hung up and I have a whole bunch of plastic meat hooks. So uh, yeah, let's get these guys hung up. This is my cat, Toto. Hello, Toto. Hi. Yes, but more importantly, this is my biltong dryer, my biltong drying box. And admittedly, it is a bit of a Rolls Royce model, very fancy. Lovely mirror finish stainless steel construction. It's got a fan on top and it sucks the air out, so the air enters the box through the side. It's got little vents that are covered with some fine mesh, so it keeps out all forms of insects, flies, pet cats, etc. Now, you don't need such a fancy box uh, to dry your biltong. You get, uh, well, you get some very, very basic ones made out of cardboard. You can use a cardboard box and just seal it up um, in a similar fashion with a fan to either extract the air or blow it through the system. Uh, you just need circulating air. Um, some of them have a heat source to dry the air because the meat gives off quite a lot of humidity as it dries. And of course humidity is uh, ideal um, circumstances for mold growth, which you do not want. But the problem with a light source is that uh, it speeds up the drying process, which isn't necessarily the best way to go for biltong. Traditionally, the finest, best biltong is made uh, with a cold drying process. The colder, the better. The lower the temperature, the better. Um, which is why it was traditionally made in the winter months, back in the day when there were no forms of refrigeration or anything like that. Um, so we are heading into spring now, so the average temperatures are going up here. So I've got these LED lights in here so that I can see very, very quickly if any mold 
does form on my strips of meat while they are hanging and drying. And as soon as I see any mold, I take those bits of meat out and I dip them in a strong vinegar solution, sort of 50-50 with water. Um, I just dip them in there to kill the mold and then I chuck another handful of spice and rub it into the meat and then re-hang it up. By that time, the meat has, has gained it as much saltiness as it's going to get. So adding some more spice and so on isn't gonna um, damage the flavor in any way. It just makes sure that the surface of the meat um, is nice and acidic and hostile towards any, any form of uh, fungal growth, sort of mold and so on. All right, let's get the meat inside. All right, so all the meat is hanging up. It has a nice airflow going through the box and between all the pieces. So no piece of meat is allowed to touch the one next to it and also mustn't touch the side of the, of the container. Uh, like I said before, there is no need to have such a fancy, marvelous design box. But I happen to have it, so I may as well flaunt it. It's a nice conversation piece. And when visitors walk into the house, they are greeted by this lovely smell of curing biltong, which is very, very, very nice indeed. So uh, yeah, so I may as well have this as a nice conversation piece. It was actually designed by a colleague of mine who used to work at a very large uh, fabrication company. So in his spare time, he designed it and it was laser cut from uh, a very shiny sort of mirror finished stainless steel and it was riveted together and then the project just kind of sat in his garage for nine years. Uh, it needed a few more steps to complete it. And then he came across another one that was fully assembled. You can buy these kits in uh, in some stores in South Africa. You can get you can get various. You can get the basic ones like are just sort of cardboard boxes with a light bulb inside and a fan, or you can get some fancy uh, fancier ones like um, uh, sort of like very large Tupperware containers, uh, also with a fan and a and a light bulb and, and so on. And you also get Perspex ones. Like the entire thing is like a great big Perspex box. Uh, similar setup. So he bought himself a fully assembled one of them and he very kindly donated this one to me and I just put the finishing touches to it. I had a few bits and pieces lying around. I found some stainless steel mesh, put that on there. I made these aluminium brackets myself and put them on and I found an old piece of Perspex and made a nice door for it. So I was able to complete it um, because you're not going to find one of these just on a shelf somewhere. This is a very nice fancy bespoke model. And I'm very proud to have it and to put it to good use. So there we go. This uh, meat is gonna cure for about a week or so and then it'll be ready to slice up. But I'll give you guys updates along the way. Here we have the biltong on day four. You can see the meat is definitely darkened a bit. Let's open the door, have a closer look. classed as wet biltong if you slice that up. I prefer my biltong to be just a little bit drier than that, so it'll give another couple of days. And then it's ready. Day six in the biltong dryer. I'm gonna call it. I reckon that's done. Let's take it out and slice it up. There we go. Doesn't that look beautiful? Now I've removed the plastic hooks and I weighed these bits of meat, I piled it all up and weighed it, and the weight comes to about 1.9 kilos, and what went in, in its wet state and with the spices, uh, was about 4.3 kilos. So, over six days, that's a loss of 2.4 kilos through uh, moisture being released from the meat. So that's 55% of its weight, which disappears um, through the drying process.
All right, just a quick disclaimer. No cows were shot at in this video. <laughs> As you can maybe see today that I'm videoing is a completely different day to when the cows were walking around. There are no cows. Also the arrow I shot had a field point, which is used for target shooting. That did not have a broad head for hunting. I've lost my arrow now. I'm a bit bummed about that, but never mind. It's, uh, the wind is very strong. It blew it somewhere I know not where. Well, it might turn up again later. You never know. So there we go. I did not really shoot a cow. <laughs> Made you look, though. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, don't forget that sharing is caring. So let's share this video far and wide with, uh, with absolutely everyone you know. And go ahead and tag every single vegan that you've come across on social media, maybe someone you know. Vegans are a strange bunch. They are wandering around in the darkness of ignorance. And it's up to us to just do our part, to do our best to just maybe bring a few of them back to the light. So. Uh, Go for it. Share it far and wide. Thank you very much for stopping by. And, um, yeah. Catch you in the next video. Oh, hey there. Welcome back to my channel. Now, my channel is mostly about cigars. Smoking cigars, growing cigar tobacco. Mmm, <laughs> let's try that again.